Ever heard of the United Arab Republic? Probably not. That's because it only existed for an underwhelming three years back between 1958 through 1961. The Union was a pretty hastily thrown together political merger of Egypt and Syria, and it just doesn't stack up against other historical unions. Nonetheless, why did Egypt and Syria even unite to begin with? Well, Syria and Egypt actually have maintained a defence agreement since 1955, and the opinion of the Egyptian president, Gamal Abdel Nasser, had been quite high throughout the Arab nations ever since the Second Arab-Israeli War in 1956. The Arab Socialist Ba'ath Party from Syria, in particular, was very fond of President Nasser, and was the first to raise a strong argument in favour of uniting with Egypt. This suggestion began to seem more appealing in 1957, as the Western world began to grow intensely suspicious of the developing Communist Party in Syria, as they feared a complete takeover of communism in the Arab country. This suspicion put major pressure on Syria, and as the Cold War dragged on, the Syrian crisis of 1957 placed the nation in a precarious position between the United States and its allies on one side, and the Soviet Union on the other. The crisis emboldened the advocates of a union with Egypt, and the movement progressed. President Nasser finally shared his thoughts on the matter, informing Syrian President Shukri al Khwatli and Prime Minister Khalid al-Azim that before any union could be made, Syria must purge the communists from its government. The Syrian response was clever, and the delegation, which included the President and Prime Minister, challenged President Nasser's assertion by stating that the union itself would be the only way to fully rid Syria of the communist threat. This wasn't enough to convince President Nasser initially, but when Afif al-Bizri, Syria's army chief of staff and a previously known communist sympathizer, led his own delegation to try and persuade the Egyptian leader, he found success. You would think that President al khwati and Prime Minister al-Azim would have been greatly pleased by President Nasser's new enthusiasm for a union, but instead they considered the acts of al-Biziri to be comparable to a military coup as they were not even made aware of the delegation until a day afterward. Furthermore, the Egyptians drove a hard bargain. President Nasser made his terms for the Union very clear and very harsh. He demanded a plebiscite, the dissolution of parties, and the withdrawal of the army from politics. And he himself would become the first president of the new United Arab Republic. The Syrians were now hesitant, and many were very concerned about the future of political life in Syria specifically. But either way, the Syrian authorities felt that the only viable option at this point, in response to the increasing pressure they'd been under, was to accept the terms and join the Union. The United Arab Republic was officially formed on February 22, 1958, and President Nasser next looked toward pulling the other Arab nations into the Republic. Another big goal might have been to unite other Arab-speaking countries. Unfortunately for Nasser, his new dream never came true, and the Union in its entirety crumbled when the Syrians grew tired of the Egyptian superiority forced upon them. Syria's army launched a true coup d'etat on September 28, 1961, in Damascus, and announced Syria's desire to withdraw from the Republic. And on October 5th, President Nasser confirmed his approval and the end of the Union.